Welcome to our demo of SOLIDWORKS, Team Center, and SWIM to link the two. First, you can see we're running SOLIDWORKS. In this case, it's SOLIDWORKS 2012. What we're going to do is open up our Team Center panel and take a look at this, and I'm going to pin it open so it'll just stay put. As we mentioned, it's a pretty simple panel. So first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new part. So I simply click New. I pull up the templates from my existing templates folders. In this case, I'm going to create an item in Team Center. I'm going to go get a part number for it. it automatically names it for me, and I'm going to call it. Uh, I'm going to call this my uh, example wrench. In this case, I'm just going to use the same values for both of these fields, and I'm going to create it in my uh, local working directory. And I'm going to create a new folder in Team Center to be able to see this data as I create it. So we'll just leave it as new folder. So now it's creating the part in Team Center, and it's then going to check that empty part out for me and reserve it for me so nobody else can create part number 56. Now we can see here's part number 56. The little green arrow indicates it's checked out to me, and it's ready for me to go ahead and create my uh, wonderful design here. So we're going to create a little, uh, little wrench here just to have a little bit of fun. And we'll go ahead and add some dimensions onto this. Let's uh, make that about uh, 12. We'll dimension the diameter here to get the width of the wrench. Make it a little bit longer. And that looks good. Go ahead and create a solid from this. Make it about 5 millimeters thick. Okay, and now we have a part. So all I need to do now is say I want to share this part with the other people in my organization. Just come over and click a Team Center Save to save the current model. It says here's what's going to get saved. Is this what you want? Looks good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and I'm going to keep the checkouts. Maybe make a change to it. Okay, so very quickly I've created a part. It's in my local working directory, but it's also saved into Team Center. So I can keep working on this part. I've kept it checked out, but the other members of my team now can be made aware and can go look at this part. So now let's go take a peek in Team Center and see what it looks like. So in Team Center, I can have a lot of different things. So here I'm going to go to my home folder and I can see kind of some basic organization of my data. This is uh, how I want to organize my data so I can find things. In this case, the little wrench that we just created. So I can see when you create this wrench you create a number of different pieces of information. At the top here we're creating what's called an item. So an item you can think of as the storage cabinet that we're going to put things into. So I'm going to create a storage cabinet number 56 and in that cabinet I'm going to have a revision A cabinet where I'm going to put the wrench the first design. Every time I make a new design change to this wrench I'm going to create like another storage area in this cabinet called 56. So underneath this particular item revision, which is the organizational tool we have here, I've got some properties forms, I've got the part itself, that's what this symbolizes here, and I've got the what we call the JT representation of the part. So the JT representation is a 3D representation of this part. So right away, with almost no with no effort on my part, especially in SolidWorks, I've created information in Team Center and thumbnail views. So immediately, anybody else in the organization who is authorized to look at it can come look at this data and see exactly what I've got. In this case, a simple wrench and other information about who created it, when I created it, all that kind of information. Okay, so let's go back over to Team Center and we'll take a look at, you know, maybe making a change to this part and see how it updates. So I'm going to just do a cut here and go ahead and put another hex at the other end of this and we'll make it, uh, in this case, a little bit, uh, uh, let's make it a 14 millimeter hex and we'll go ahead and cut all the way through all. Okay, so now again we've changed our wrench. 
just to make sure you can see something different when we see it in Team Center, we'll go ahead and change the color of that wrench to something a little more, a little more interesting. How about green today? Okay, and with that now, I can just go ahead and check this wrench into Team Center, and I can say I'm done with it and don't want to do any more work with it. So it's going to remove it from SolidWorks, remove it from the disk, and it's now put away in Team Center. When I go to Team Center, now I can take a look at this information and I'll see that this part and I can see my part has the new representation in Team Center. Go, we're going to go ahead and release this so we can create a new revisionist wrench and make some more design changes. I'm going to submit this information to a workflow. In this case it's just a kind of a quick release process and create the new lockdown versions of these. So this is running it through a workflow quickly and it's locking this data down so nobody can make a change to revision A. So now let's go back over to SolidWorks and let's go ahead and say, well, you know, I do need to make some more changes to that wrench. So let's go ahead and, uh, and see what that wrench looks like. So I'm going to grab out of my new folder, wrench, and say, please open it for me and I can see right here that I can get the wrench I can open it in session but I can't check it out and the reason for that is that it's been released so when I open this part up I can see now the status is the checkered flag indicating that it's released so what I can do immediately is say well I want to start working on rev B of this part so I'm going to give it a new revision it changes to rev B and then Go ahead and save it to Team Center as Rev B, and let me make a couple more changes to this part. Now that it's checked in Revision B, and it's checked out to me, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of uh, geometry to this. So let's go ahead and add some text here, and we're just going to add swim to this. And we'll make it a little bit bigger just kind of because that's fun to do. Let's make it. Hi. Okay, so now we've got those characters. We'll go ahead and kind of burn them into the uh, into the part a little bit. Let's go about uh, two millimeters. And now I've gone ahead and added that geometry to the part, and we can give it a different color, kind of be interesting here. So we'll go ahead and make that like a dark blue, that particular feature. And come back over here. We're going to save it to Team Center, and I'm going to also, but I want to, I'm going to hang on to the file for just a minute because I'm going to go ahead and make the drawing of this particular file. So now I've got the file. It's it's stored in Team Center. It's updated, and I'm going to come and say that I want to uh, make a drawing from this part. And let's make it. Uh, it's a pretty small part, so let's go ahead and choose a. Uh, maybe a A4 is probably big enough, but I like the shape of A3 a little better. And we'll just kind of drag the part over here, put it on the drawing, and then add a couple other views. And now we've got a drawing. And you can see, you know, of course, the attributes automatically populate from SolidWorks here to show you the name and the part number of this. And we show you how this is organized. Okay, this is now. Re directly related to the part. They both share the same item revision. So what I've done is I've said I want to check out the part two and then save them both together. Okay, so they're going to be placed together in the same item revision. I'll show you what that means in just a second. And after it's checked everything in, I want it to clean up after itself. Alright, so now everything's done. Let's see what it looks like in Team Center for this part at this point. All right, now I have a new revision. So remember I said that the 56, the main item, acts as kind of a holder for multiple revisions. Here we've got revision A and revision B. When we look at revision B, we can see we have the part, we have the drawing of the part, and we have the PDF of that drawing, which can be very helpful for people who want to be able to look at, obviously look at the PDF 
and since this is often what's going to be sent to suppliers you can very quickly uh, look at that PDF, print it, do whatever you need to. Again it was created automatically without you having to do anything extra. And of course we still have the JT of this new part with our fancy logo now embedded into it. So you can think of an item revision as a collector. It collects all the information that's needed to define this part. You could add other things to this. There could be Word documents, there could be specifications, um, testing requirements, etc. All of that can be collected underneath this item revision and stored. Let's go back into Team Center and what I want to do now is I want to get something a little more interesting. So I happen to know that I have a part that ends, num that ends in 47. So I want to go find that part and it's this engine assembly that I've got. So let's open that engine assembly and, and see what it looks like. And I want to open it so that it looks essentially the same way it did the last time I, uh, I retrieved that assembly. So I'm going to tell it that I just want to open up the, the top level of the assembly. I don't care about the drawing or anything like that. So here's the assembly now in SolidWorks. And I can expand and see what this looks like. Now what's interesting here is I can see that one of these parts is out of date. That's what the little uh, sign means here. And when I hover over almost any of these icons or status indicators, it tells me exactly what's going on. In this case, it says there's a later revision of that part in Team Center. So when I look at my assembly here, I'm not seeing the latest thing. Well, you may have also noticed that when I highlight, I click something over here in the right panel, it highlights it on the assembly and shows me what I'm looking at uh, in the SolidWorks tree as well. So in this case, I have a single valve cover in Team Center, but there's actually two instances of it in my assembly. So the assembly cares about each individual instance, while Team Center is really tracking this as a part that is used multiple places. So here, let's take a look at our injector assembly, and I'm going to update that model and see what else is out there. Well, I can see that there's a, a Rev B and I can see that's got some much taller stacks and I can also see there's even a B.1 that has a little shorter stacks. But So let's go ahead and go to the latest revision, in this case B.1. It gets updated. Now everything's happy. I can see the B.1 revision in my assembly and everything is now up to date. And of course if I wanted I can now check in my assembly into either Rev A or create a new revision of the assembly as well and send it back over to Team Center. So let's take a look at this assembly and see what an assembly looks like in Team Center. Well in Team Center when you work with an assembly in addition to that item revision containing the uh, like a PDF of the drawing and so on instead of a JT what we have is we have what's called a bomb view and a bomb view is really the list of components that make up that assembly. But it can be much more than that. Inside of Team Center, not only can you see the assembly structure that's very similar, of course, to what you saw, see over in uh, SolidWorks, but you'll also see, for example, here it notes that we have two of those magnesium valve covers. So it can do things like uh, tell you how many instances you have, and the other thing it does is it understands the orientation of the parts. So it's more than just a parts list. It also allows you to create an assembly of what we call JT files. So you can look at this product and you can also look at the assembly and see what was the assembly that was last stored. So if you remember, I didn't actually save that changed assembly back to Team Center. So I'm still looking at the original version of that injector assembly here. So now I want, what I want to do is take advantage of a revision rule. And I want to look at a different set of parts put together in this assembly. Now remember I mentioned that we're looking at an assembly of those JT files. Remember there wasn't a JT file of the assembly. But what I can do is I can change different information in and out, even if it's never been put together inside of Team Center. So in this case, I'm going to look at the, the latest parts. So I'm going to have it update to be 1.1 and add that to my assembly. So even though I haven't saved that assembly back from Team Center, it knows where that part should be, knows the orientation, and can plug it right into place in the assembly. So this is a pretty interesting way for people 
to look at product structure and understand how things fit together. You can measure and interrogate that information without actually ever having to run SolidWorks. It's pretty cool once these parts are available what you can do with them. So back in SolidWorks, suppose I wanted to add something to this, to this assembly. Well, as you're going to see, this is actually a very small assembly. This is a little model car, but I'm going to go get my wrench and I want to add it to this assembly. So I can simply right click on the assembly and say, I want to insert a model. Now what's cool is I can search through Team Center to find it. I can browse. I can look around. Lots of different ways of finding this information. In this case, I'm going to go to my new folder, grab my wrench, and make sure I grab a part, not a drawing. And I'm going to add that wrench to this assembly. So it shows it to me. And now I can select it and I can just add this wrench right into my assembly here. And I've inserted the part by searching in Team Center. I could search on criteria, any kind of search criteria you can think of. When it was created, uh, whether it's a part or an assembly or a toolbox item, all of those things can be searched on and very quickly added in. So what we've looked at here is a very quick demonstration of how to create something new in Team Center how to add a drawing to it, how to store it in Team Center, how it's represented and shown to other users, how we can create an assembly, add parts to an assembly, how we can update things to get the latest models into session, and how we can um, save information back and view it in Team Center. I hope this gives you an idea of how quick and easy it is to use the SolidWorks Integration Manager SWIM to manage your SolidWorks data with Team Center. Thank you.